Pico. Pico, Pico. looking at me that way? We all have missed you. Papa, Mama, Annette, Jean-Marie, Justin. I have very good news for you, Bernadette. I'm bringing you back. To school? To catechism? And to home. The dungeon? Mm-hmm, <gasps> yes. children, open your notebooks. We are going to have a lesson in writing. <coughs> now, now, Augustine. <laughs> That's enough, children. The older pupils will start. You will write out your name in full and your age on the top line of the page. Pauline, I said the top of the page. And legibly, if you please. Stand up. When one is as backward as you, Bernadette, one should at least behave. What is God? God? God is love. That's all? Mm, yes. God is love. Sophie? God is a spirit of purity, eternal, infinitely perfect, creator of heaven and earth and master of all things. That's more like it. Take your seat now. Where are you going, Louise? God for wood, we don't have any more. Hello, Miriam. It's Saturday, we'll go for you. Yes, let us, Mama. We'll gather such a lot, there'll be some left to sell. Not you, Bernadette, it's too cold out, the child has a fever. In the mountains, I was always outside. All right, but go put on your cape. <sighs> I'll be right out. Guess what happened yesterday? Sister Damian punished Julie for whispering to Sophie. What about Sophie? Just to let her off? She sure is sister's pet. It's disgusting. <laughs>
Bernadette. Bernadette! She sure is lazy. What are you doing? You'll see. Miriam. She seems dead. Oh, no. If she were dead, she'd be lying down. Let's go across. Yeah, let's go. Hey, what are you doing? Nothing. You were praying. Gosh, you're stupid to pray out here. Every place is good to pray in. The water's not a bit cold. To me, it's just as warm as dishwater. Warm? Warm as dishwater. Didn't you see anything? No. No. Did you see something? I saw nothing. You won't tell a soul? No, no. In the grotto, I saw a beautiful lady, about my height, no more. She was all dressed in white, with a light blue belt and yellow roses at both her feet. Say, are you kidding us? No, Miriam. Look at her. She's not trying to kid us. My goodness. I'll be so happy when we go back. Mama. Yes. You know what? Bernadette says she saw a miracle at Massapierre. What? Bernadette. Bernadette. Is what Annette tells me true? Yes, Mama. Did you tell anyone else? Yes, Miriam. Then everyone will know. What's going on here? You see, your father can't find a job, you realize all the worries we have, and all you can do is make up stories. But, Mom... When will you begin to see that people like us can't afford to draw attention? And you, you're gonna get it! Oh! 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 oh. oh. No! No! Oh. It's all your fault! Oh, Louise! It was a dream. It was a bundle of branches. A bundle of branches, you imagine, with... Oh, no, Mama. She had such a wonderful face. This was bound to have an effect on you. I don't want you to go to the grotto. Promise? Yes, Mama. You promise? Yes, I promise. cheating again. I'm not going to play with you. And there were yellow roses at both her feet. Well, what do you think of that? 
Yes, yellow roses. Big liar. <gasps> What's going here? Sister, Bernadette's making up lies. She says she saw a beautiful lady at the Rock at Massabielle. Yes, sister, I did. Oh, is that so? Why don't you go and tell it to Father Palmion? That's the way Bernadette told me the story. My dear Father Pomian, what on earth makes you imagine that this story merits our interest? I was impressed. Thank you, Therese. And who are these... Soubirous? Soubirous. Why, they're the poorest family we have in Lourdes. But they have a spirit of love found only among the poor. There are six of them in one miserable little room that used to be a dungeon in the old days. It's scandalous. For whom? Speaking about dungeons. Yes, seems to be familiar now. Why, yes. I once visited the man, uh, Francois Soubirous, in prison. He used to be a miller and he couldn't manage to make a go of it. Well, it was just last year. He was caught stealing something or other. A plank of wood. What's that? A plank of wood, why not breath to breathe? The poor are always wrong. All the same, where there's smoke, there's fire. Fine maxim, Father Sayer, worthy of Pilate or Herod, but not of you. How is he faring at present, this Francois Soubirous? You wouldn't dare. I bet you. I bet you wouldn't. Oh, no. But wouldn't you be happy to go back? Happy? I've got to go back. Ah! Oh. Then it's settled. I'm going to run and get permission from your father. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, hurry up. <laughs> Papa? Papa? Oh, Mr. Papa? Now, what's all the excitement about? Please let her you go, You know you Papa. shouldn't be coming here. Please give her permission, Mr. Subaru. Who am I supposed oh, yes, to give permission? Please. To me, Papa. Me, Papa? Please, Papa. Permission for what? To go to Massa to the yeah. grotto. No, Bernadette. You know you promised Mama. Oh. Oh, let her go, Mr. Subirous. If the lady's holding Rosary Beach, she can't harm the child. Well, all right. There. Oh, thank, thank you, you, Papa. Thank you, Mr. Cazenat. Thank you, Mr. Cazenat. Well, hurry, come on. Come on. Try your best, please, Louise, won't you? Yes, I'll try, Mrs. Martin. Day after tomorrow. Mrs. Subaru, will you please let Bernadette go out to the grotto? She wants so much to go, Mama. Mr. Kazanov says that as long as she's got rosary beads on her, it must be all right. Don't insist. You know we both forbid it. But Mr. Subaru gave permission. Yes. Yes, yes, he did. Oh, now, Louise, why not, since Francois agrees? Ah, oh, come on, <laughs> hurry up. <laughs> I gave it to Augustine. Why, no, I'm not the one who has it. It's Sophie. It's not me either. I told Julie to. <gasps> That's right, where I put it? Oh. Is it full? Yes. Well, are you coming? The others have all gone.
everybody. And take out your rosary. You see the light? There she is. Look closely. Her rosary beads are by her side. She's looking at us. Sprinkle it with holy water. If it's the devil, it'll go away. devil, go away. If you come from our Lord in heaven, stay. Oh, please stay. Bernadette, Bernadette. Look at her. Maybe she's dead. Maybe she's dead. But she looks happy. Well, something's certainly wrong. Maybe she's under a spell. Let's try to wake her. Bernadette. Bernadette. Oh, I'm scared. Run and get your mother. No, I'll go. You stay here. Julie, maybe Tony Niccolo's in the pasture. Go and see. Hurry, hurry. Bernadette, wake up. Wake, wake up. up, Bernadette. Bernadette? What? Are you all right? Yes. What happened to you, Bernadette? You fought me like a little tiger. Were you still able to see the rest of us? You gave me a real scare, you know. Here's Mama. There you are. You want them laughing at us. Why did you have to bring anybody along? But Mama, I didn't ask anyone to come with me. Oh, you. Why, Louise, what are you doing? She's a disgrace. No, Louise, she's an angel. I know you're going to go back there again. Don't you worry, Louise. Next time, I'll go along myself. Mrs. Martin went to Massabielle with all the girls. And what happened to Reyes? Well, the beautiful lady commanded Bernadette. Will you do me the grace of coming to see me for two weeks? The grace. And what did little Bernadette answer? After having asked for permission from my parents, yes, I will. Isn't that fine? And the lady went on. I do not promise that you will be happy in this world, but in the next one.
Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening. Doctor. Ah, my dear judge. Hello, Doctor. How are you? Oh, Is your digestion my. better? Double six. That's not bad, Doctor. <laughs> evening, Martin. Good evening. Good evening to you, Mr. Mayor. Ah, good evening, Doctor. Evening, Colonel. Evening, Doctor. Good oh, evening. Hello, Doctor. Say, Doctor, you're just a man. Well, what do you think, medically speaking, of the events at Massabiel? The events? That's going too far. Let's not exaggerate. No, indeed. I'm serious, my dear Commissioner. I mean exactly what I said. Self-hypnosis? Hallucination? Don't ask me. My dear Colonel, now, do you think you'd be able to bring a case to a jury without studying its whole history? With me, it's the same thing. I'm not a diagnostician till I examine the patient. <laughs> Obviously. I'm Dr. Duzy, Commander-in-Chief Renault of the Gendarme Station at Tarbes, on a mission in Lourdes for the events just mentioned. Have they gone as far as that? Uh, I'm going there tomorrow morning, at the usual hour. Oh, well, you'll see me there. Yes, I plan to look in on my way to the hospital. Might as well. Splendid. Now, tell us exactly where she was standing. Close by. I could have touched her by just stretching out my hand. But why are you rubbing your eyes, my dear? When she goes away, it's as if I were passing from sunshine to shadow. And then? Why did you cry? Tell me why. Because she did. She said to me... She said to you? Pray to God for all the poor sinners. But how does it happen you hear her voice, Bernadette? I can't be sure. It seems to come to me here. It comes to me here. Pulse quiet and regular, respiration free and easy. No sign of hysteria or nervousness. It's very disturbing. Gentlemen. Well, our friend has let the girl take him in, hasn't he? Absurd. It's ridiculous. No, thank you. It's just play acting. I would even go further than that, Judge. I'd wager that this is a family conspiracy. Thank you. A conspiracy? Uh, it's the parents who exploit their children to make money. An old story. Yes. But all this might take a bad turn. I don't think we should take it too lightly. Let me handle it. And I can promise to put a stop to this Bernadette nonsense once and for all. After me, if you don't mind. I'll have her brought to my office at once. So you're Bernadette Soubirous. Yes, I am. What's all this I hear of a vision at Massabiel? It's the truth, sir. Sit down. And now tell me exactly what you saw. I saw a beautiful lady, so beautiful, dressed completely in white, with a light blue belt and yellow roses at both her feet.
know you were out there listening. That's my business, Colonel Detour. Well? Well, well, the child seems to be sincere. She believes she saw something. Though we know it's impossible. Obviously. There's someone behind all this. I guess so. Without her knowledge. Oh, well, now I shall have my turn, Colonel. What do you intend to do? To go and fetch her when she comes from Vespers today and question her. Mm -hmm. In my fashion. Sit down, child. This will take a while. Thank you, sir. What's your name, young lady? Bernadette. Bernadette Subirus. What is your occupation? My occupation? Yes, what do you do all day? I go to the sister school. I help mother with the housework. I take care of my brother. Very well. Tell me now, just what do you think you saw at my Sabiel? A beautiful lady, so beautiful. Beautiful, say, as Mayor Lecard's daughters or the Baroness Grandma? <laughs> Much more so. They can't help it, though, poor things. Poor things? And you maintain that she's the Virgin Mary? She didn't tell me her name, sir. Hey, Subirus! Subirus! Hey, Francois! What do you want? It's Bernadette! What about her? Come on down. Oh, but I'm working. Look, uh, would you mind if I... Oh, go ahead. Be right down. Come on, Francois. Where are we going? Jacome's been questioning her for over an hour now. Jacome? But what for? It's the same old story. The colonel this morning and now the police commissioner. And with him, it'll be worse. To them, we're all criminals. Yeah, don't I know. I thought I should come and get you. Your pal, Fred. Thanks a lot. Now, I'm going to read to you precisely what you've stated. Let's see. You told me that, that she appeared in the back of the grotto. Why, no, I didn't at all, sir. I said above the briars. Very well. She was wearing a purple belt, and her golden hair flowed on her back and shoulders like a billowing veil. No, my goodness, you've made everything sound silly. I said she wears a veil, but since it's a long one, her hair wouldn't be seen through it, would it? And her belt is blue. Purple! How would you know about it? It was blue. This foolishness has got to be stopped once and for all. Will you, yes or no, promise not to go back again to Massa Biel? I've already promised. Ah, good. I promised the lady to go for 15 days. So you insist on going. I'm warning you, I'm bringing the gendarmes. They'll take you to prison. Why, then I won't cost my father so much. I hope you'll allow someone to come and teach catechism. Hey there, hey there, where do you think you're going? My daughter's up there and I want to see her. Hey, hey, you. Get your hands off. Where do you think you're going? You can't go by without permission. What's the meaning of this? Who are you? I'm Bernadette's father. Subi Roos. Oh, yes, I recognize you. Well, you're right on time. This child is a minor and you are responsible. I know it. Yes, and you know very well without my telling you just what it costs to break the law. Now then, what is your version of all this nonsense? She believes it, Mr. Commissioner. That's her affair, not mine. But what is mine is that she's creating disorder. In your place, Subi Roos, I'd not be exposing myself one bit further. I'd be glad to oblige, Commissioner. My wife and I are fed up with all this business. Being followed, questioned, investigated. Ah! That sounds more reasonable. I'm pleased with your attitude. 
You may take her home in that case. And no more nonsense. I think you'd better go out this way. From this moment on, you're to have them followed and report on every single movement of the girl, her parents, and the neighbors. Hang up. Post a gendarme at the grotto. Ah, and he's to identify everyone who goes there. Go on, get a move on. No loitering, please. Yesterday morning, February 22nd, mass was not said and no visitors approached the grotto. But then in the afternoon, we followed her on the road from the school. me, the apparition's afraid of gendarmes. There were no visions for the first time. And what about the girl? Bernadette? She began crying like a Madonna. All her relatives were there begging her not to go to the grotto. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Well, it's most disturbing. But nothing occurred. What's disturbing about that? Yes, that's what's disturbing. You see, if the child were really making believe, what would stop her from inventing the same story as before? Ah, let's put it that she's a bit mad. A bit mad? Then the police wouldn't bother her. She'd have gone right ahead with it. Well, in my opinion, this is pure invention, Mr. Commissioner. It was my opinion, too, you realize. But, my dear fellow, how would you explain the fact that her mother and aunts were all pleading with her not to go to Massabien? All pleading with her not to go to Massabien. Not here? In the grotto? It's so 
bitter. Well, she's completely crazy. She must be. She ate that grass. What does she think she's doing? It's very strange. Well, this time she's gone too far. I was never taken in. I'm still not convinced. Did you happen to see Madame Giacomo? I'll bet her husband's going to get a talking to. Poor Bernadette. It's a pity. What did she think she was doing? There was never any water in that spot. Never. Oh, Mama, come here. Come here, Mama. Look at the water. You see it? Come along. That's enough. What can I do for you, my child? I'm Bernadette Soubirous. Come inside. Now then, what's the trouble? Father, the lady in the grotto said I should tell the priests that she wishes to have a chapel in Massa Biel. Did she? And exactly who is this woman? She didn't tell me. Didn't you ask her? Oh, yes. But she just smiled at me, and she didn't say a word. And now you affirm that she said to tell me that she wishes to have a chapel at Massa Biel. Yes, Father. That's... Here's to you, perched on top of a rock. Her name you can't tell me. She's quite probably as mad as you are. She wants us to build a chapel in the grotto. And you accept this incredible message, and you expect us to be stupid enough to believe you. She didn't ask me to make you believe it. She only asked me to tell you. You're, you're just play-acting. You made a spectacle of yourself in front of everybody yesterday. What for? I only did what my lady told me to. Told you to? How do you know you even understand her? You're ignorant. Why, well, you can't even read. At Mass, at Vespers, how do you manage? Listen. Because you wish to continue this game, try once more to find out who she is. And as long as she seems to think that she should have the right to a chapel, make her give you some proof. Uh, for instance, she could make a flower bloom on the briar in the grotto. Father, could it be ever such a tiny little one? Little what? Chapel, if you please. <sighs> That's what the child came to ask me on behalf of her lady in the grotto. I bless the Lord each and every day that we didn't get mixed up in this whole affair. And yet, many people can't understand our silence, Father. They're the same. Yes, the very same ones who'd attack us if we did take a stand in the matter. I cannot adopt the maxim that prudence is a virtue. Real prudence is indeed a virtue. It's being able to foresee one's imprudences. Take my word for it. Yes. And that would make us all equal to St. Thomas. My dear Pomian, the doubting of St. Thomas turned out as valuable, in my opinion, as, as the faith of all the disciples. Why, Judge, what a surprise. Please excuse me, Mother. But it's really indispensable that I see you before next Thursday. The last day in the two weeks. Yes, to be sure. Back to your studies, children, please. 
Sister Damien, please take the children in. I accept. Of course. Benedette. Ah, so there you are. You wanted to see me, sir? Would you care to go into the parlor? It won't be necessary. She'll be staying inside for a long time soon. Do you see those gendarmes? They've come to take you to prison. But you can't do this, Judge. You can put me in prison, but make sure it has very heavy bars, sir, or I may escape. Listen. I offer you one last chance. Will you be reasonable? What do you mean by the word reasonable? Renounce going to the grotto. That, no. And nobody can make me. I see. You prefer going to prison. Perishing in prison. Please, Judge, have pity. Leave Bernadette with us. Don't shut her in prison. She couldn't bear it. If only she would change her mind. But I'll grant your request, Mother. I'll think it over. The last morning of the two-week period, Lourdes had become a dead city. Everyone was at the grotto. 20,000 persons. Well, it can't be. Father Pedro Mal is exaggerating. These are also the figures given by the police commissioner. 20,000 arrived during the night from all the surrounding areas. They expected something to happen. Nothing happened. Nothing. They all made a dash to her door. They were furious with her, eh? And waited in line for hours to be able to kiss Bernadette. To be able to kiss her? I myself witnessed, says Father Paramal, the recovery of two paralyzed boys who had simply drunk some of the water. But what is the church to reap from all of this? Mm, Father Paramal reminds Your Excellency that never before have so many come to confession or made the pre-Lenten retreat. What's so amusing? Hmm. The anger of Father Paramal. He says souvenir shops are beginning to crop up along the entire road to Masabiel. The merchants will always precede the temple. I would be curious to see what she looks like, this little Miss Bernadette. Francois. Hmm? Hmm? What's going on? She wants to go to the grotto. In the middle of the night? Well, at least we'll be alone. That's what you think. It's the day before Annunciation. The day before Annunciation? Oh, come quick. Oh, please hurry. Please, my lady. Oh, my lady, won't you please tell me what your name is? My lady, please. Tell me your name. I need to know it. Oh, my lady, please. If you would only tell it to me, I must know.
description. What did you say? You could curtsy, at least, when you come in. I am the Immaculate Conception. What are you talking about? I don't know. It's the name she told me. Is that what she said when you asked for her name? Yes, that's what she told me, Father, when I asked her. I asked her three times and I'd have gone on till she answered. Say it again. She opened her arms and very slowly she folded her hands on her breast over her heart. And lifting her eyes, she said, I am the Immaculate Conception. You must have been mistaken. You shouldn't repeat things you don't know the meaning of. Oh, but that's what she told me. I've been saying it over and over so I'd remember it. I've heard enough. You may leave. Father. Father, what's the matter? Bernadette, the lady spoke to her last night. Today, 25th of March, Annunciation Day. And what did she say? She said, I am the Immaculate Conception. But Bernadette might have imagined it. Oh, no. She couldn't possibly have imagined such a thing. But then, but then, but I don't understand. I've never heard this expression. We never say immaculate conception. But that's just it. Nobody has ever used it. Nobody. Therese, have you heard the news? The news, Father? Why, I've known about it since the very first day. Oh, come now. Bernadette herself didn't know it. Perhaps not, but I saw it in her eyes, Father. In other words, if anyone tries to get over the barricades, you'll shoot him down. Not quite, but he'd be put in prison. I'd wager your prison is going to be pretty full up. Father, you don't seem to appreciate that it is in the interests of the church that the commissioner issued these You orders. may tell the commissioner that the church is able to look after its own interests. And where do you intend taking all this, my good man? To the town hall, Father. Where they'll be held at the disposition of their proprietors. And they, in turn, will bring everything right back to the grotto. One would think the mayor didn't know our parishioners. Now, what's that? The mayor of the city of Lourdes. In recognition of the importance to the interests of the church to put a stop to the regrettable incidents taking place in the grotto of Massabiel, and considering, furthermore, the general welfare to being... Therefore, considering that the law prohibits the exploitation of all sources of water without authorization by the government, decrees, Article Number 1, that it is henceforth a crime to draw water at the said source. Therefore, a crime to draw water at the source. Mr. Mayor, whom is this ruling intended to affect? Everyone, naturally. That's not quite true. Common knowledge that you have already drawn the water for analysis and that you hope to further Lourdes as a tourist center and as a hope resort. It's proper to do so. And besides being proper, no doubt, Mr. Mayor, it would be good business for your administration, though to the detriment of our parishioners. But what you forget about, Mr. Mayor, is that this morning at six o'clock, a paralyzed child, one who had been an invalid all of his life, was bathed in these very waters 
and then ran all alone into the arms of his mother. That's a case for the medical authorities, but not the administration. Uh, by the way, Father Perimal, I wish to remind you that the law of June 30th, 1828... Uh, 38. Uh, to be sure, makes provision for the internment for treatment of persons suspected of insanity. Am I so suspected? No, oh, Father. Now, Father. The report of three medical officials on Bernadette Soubirous does not conclude that such internment is necessary. However, it does not oppose it. If you have no objection, therefore, our intention is But to... I do have an objection. Bernadette is completely sane. She cannot come under the terms of the law of 2838 or any other year. And she's no menace to public welfare. She has caused no disorder. She's of poor health, impoverished. But she is not unbefriended. Her soul is in my keeping. You may tell the commissioner that his gendarme should remember this. Before coming nearer, they will have to deal with me. Mama? Yes, dear? Mama, I was just in church, and I heard her voice distinctly. She's calling me. But, but it's been three months since you last That saw. doesn't matter, Mama. Oh, come on, please, let's go What back. about the fences they put well, up Well, please, there. let's go, Mama. But what am I going to do about my laundry? She may be waiting this very minute. Don't you see her? She's watching us. She's nodding to us from behind the fence. She didn't talk to me. I never saw her look prettier. But I don't understand how you could see her. The river is so wide now. The barricades are so high. I could see neither the river nor the barricades, only her. But now I know. I won't see her again. Her eyes were so blue. His Gracious Majesty the Emperor, from this day forward, access to the Grotto of Masabiel and usage of the waters of the spring are free to all. The provisional ban of June 8 is hereby withdrawn. On this day, the 18th of January, 1862, after two years of inquiry, we acknowledge that Mary the Immaculate, Mother of God, did actually appear to Bernadette Soubirous the 11th of February, 1858, and the days that followed. We hereby also humbly submit our judgment to that of our sovereign pontiff, and we authorize in our diocese the cult of Our Lady of Lourdes. We also propose to erect a sanctuary there. I can't bear it. I can't bear our being separated. I'm sure you see that with all things considered, it's for the best to come here. I accept it. And I wonder if it's still quite enough. Not quite enough. Protection. Mother, please. You say mother. You know, that's what Benedette calls me as well. But I think we both should realize that we are neither of us her mother anymore. I know that. And I'm not jealous. No. 
No, I'm not jealous. And we are indebted to you for your trouble, Mother. Bernadette's a real burden for you. You mustn't say that. She helps with the marketing. She does well in the infirmary. In the infirmary? Why, yes. We consider her almost as one of us. Already. I was afraid it was going to be another bishop. <laughs> hurry, hurry, Bernadette, go ring the bell. The Bishop of Nevers is at the gate. Won't you be seated, my child? Very well. I am happy at last to see your face, child. And your hand. Why, surely I needn't intimidate you if you felt at ease with our Heavenly Mother. That's better. Now, let's have a little talk. Have you thought of your future? Why, I guess not. What do you mean, child? We all must find something to do here on Earth. Oh, but I've been here with the sisters for three years. Yes, but generally one remains here for a limited time. I'd like to remain always. <laughs> Very easily said, but not so easy to arrange. But why, Monseigneur? Because you're not a nun. And it is indispensable to be one in order to remain indefinitely within the community. You're no longer a child, Bernadette. I think you might be happy to establish yourself in the outside world. Oh, Monsignor, please, I couldn't bear it. Then tell me, why haven't you petitioned to become a sister? Have you never thought of this? Oh, yes. But it's impossible, Monsignor, I'm poor. I couldn't bring the dowry required. From time to time, we do take someone into the novitiate who can bring no dowry, if they show vocation. Yes, but surely those without dowry are really smart and useful and make it worth your while. But I don't know anything, and I can't do anything. Hasn't the Mother Superior told you? Now, Bernadette, that's not what I've been hearing from the sister in the kitchen. We'll find some use for you. The Sisters of Nevers have an order that is dedicated to devotion to the most humiliating services. The most humiliating? And to the cross of our Lord. So you see, there's no need for schooling or wealth among them. There are other things. At Nevers, the gates at the main entrance are marked with the letters of two little words. God alone. This is the supreme rule there. God alone? If you would like to, you could ask your mother superior what advice she might give you. And I'll take care of the rest. I will, Monsignor. But I can't be sure yet.
are the principles that Monsignor once followed. On her arrival here, we are to shelter Bernadette Subirus, not so much against a curious public. The walls around us and the gatekeeper will see to that. But against the admiration of her companions. So then we will never learn about it from her own lips? Yes, Mother Marie de Rere, just once. Once only. Tomorrow I'll assemble the entire community. Bernadette will then recount the whole story of Massabiel. But nobody thereafter must ever make allusion to her presence. Does this seem excessive to you, Mother Natalie? I'm sorry, Mother. But I'm just reminded of the gospel. That one should not hide one's light under a bushel. The light will keep on burning. It shall light the world over. From Lourdes. But not from here. Nevers will serve as the dark curtain against which the light will only seem more bright. Mother Marie Therese. Yes, Mother. You've told me what you said to your novices. This is going to be the happiest day in my whole life. To behold the eyes that have seen the Virgin. Nevertheless, I suggest to you, and even order you, to consider Bernadette Subirus as nothing more than any other of your novices. One amongst many. You're tired, Mother. Why don't you get some sleep? We will welcome her in your place. Well, now, Bernadette, 
Is that where to look for your vacation? Oh, dear, please pardon me, Mother. Oh, come now, what for? For feeling a bit tired. A bit lost, above all. But I am here, Bernadette. Give me your confidence. All that I possibly can. You'll take the veil in ten days. I've chosen your name. You are Sister Marie Bernard. She will not last the night. The doctor is quite definite. We were not worthy of keeping her. The Lord only let us borrow her. On the contrary, she is one of us for all eternity. I agreed to let her make profession of her vows on her deathbed. Yet her spirit will remain a secret to us, Mother. That must be Monsignor. to die, my child. As God wills. And I understand you wish to profess your vows. I shall be happy to receive them. I'm not able to form the words. Then I shall pronounce them for you. It will suffice to say simply, so be it. I, Sister Mary Bernard, aspiring to consecrate myself to God in the congregation of the Sisters of Charity and Christian Instruction, established in the Diocese of Nevers under the authority of Monsignor Focad, make vows of poverty, chastity, obedience and charity in the manner prescribed by the statutes of the order. I pray our Lord Jesus Christ through the intercession of the Virgin Mary to grant me the grace of accomplishing my vocation with faith and humility. So be it. Pray with me, sisters, that we may all be gathered together in the Holy Presence. Farewell, my child. Mother Marie Therese, please see Monsignor to the gate. Her pulse is better. I'm not going to die tonight. But the doctor said, I know myself better than the doctor. My, my. You confess you knew that you wouldn't die tonight. And you nevertheless let me disturb Monsignor at such an hour. I'm warning you that if you are not dead by tomorrow morning, 
I shall lift your vows of profession and you'll return to the novitiate. You must do as you feel best, dear mother. God didn't want me, you see, Sister Emily. I went there, right to the gates of his mansion. But I was told, return. It's too soon. But now I'm a nun. I'm so happy. They can't send me away. What's the matter, sister? It isn't me, but there's someone dying, Sister Emily. Somebody about to die. Oh, sister. Mama. Good morning, sisters. Good morning, Mother Margaret. Good morning, Mother. Good morning, children. Listen, everybody. The postulants I'm accompanying have had a tiring voyage. They should get some rest. Please see that they're shown to their quarters and take them around the convent. You were so lucky to have been her childhood friend. There you are. Go along now and meet your companions. Oh, no. Thank you, sister. You know, I'd like to try to recognize Bernadette all by myself. Those are the eyes that have seen the Holy Virgin. Why, what on earth are you doing? The Virgin only picked me because I was the most ignorant. If she'd found someone more ignorant, why, she'd have chosen her instead. You're finally here. I'm so glad. So you've made up your mind, Julie. How's everybody at home, Julie? The whole family's well. I'll tell you all the news. Oh, no, Julie. We're not here to gossip, you know. Look what you can buy in all the shops around Lourdes. How much does one cost? Two cents. It's <laughs> <laughs> all I'm worth. Wait a minute. I've got something to show you, too. How tall the poplar trees are. Whereabouts in the grotto were you when the apparitions took place? Here somewhere. But everything's different. I can't tell. You seem to want to forget all about it. No. To be forgotten. Tell me. What do you do with a broom? <laughs> what a question. You use it to sweep with. Then what? Why, then you put it in a cupboard. That's exactly my story. The Virgin used me to sweep with and then put me in my cupboard. But that's where I belong. And that's where I'll stay.
Please, Mother, I'd like so much to see her. I've wanted to see her since I was a little girl. There she is. Sister Marie Bernard. This little one? <laughs> Why, yes, Miss, I'm sorry. Just a tiny little one. But if our mother will permit, I think I'm big enough to show you the grounds. Come with us, Julie. Tell me, do you still like salad? Why do you ask? You remember when you had to eat that grass at Mother's uh, My, but it was bitter. But I promised to do whatever she said. You always obeyed your mother, didn't you? Yes, but sometimes I wondered why. That's what I learned in this place. One needs many humiliations to make a little bit of humility. Sister Maria Pia de Galluccio. In finishing her novitiate, Sister Maria Pia de Galluccio is going for placement to the orphanage in Orléans, where she will exercise the functions she has chosen. With this, you now have the key to the kingdom of heaven. And if you do not become as pure as the little ones you care for, you are sure not to pass. Sister Marie Bernard Subirus. What is Sister Marie Bernard going to be used for? She unfortunately is capable of nothing, and she would only be a burden wherever we sent her. So, you are as useless as you said. I'm afraid it's all quite true, Monseigneur. I'm good for nothing. But then, my poor child, what are we going to do with you? And to what purpose was your entry into the congregation? That's just what I asked you when I was in Lourdes, Monseigneur. But you answered me that it didn't matter. Surely you must be capable of something, of boiling a pot of tea, of helping take care of the sick, of peeling vegetables? I'll try. Well, then, we shall allow her to stay here a little while longer. I assign to you the duty of prayer. Tea time. Is it your asthma? Don't tell anyone. I'm used to it. It's almost over. Are you suffering very much? Don't worry. It's nothing. Why don't you pray to Mother in Heaven to cure you? It's useless. She already said... What a dreadful thing it is not to be able to catch your breath. It's troublesome, but... What a dreadful when the soul itself isn't able to catch its breath. What? You mean even you? Shh. It's twelve years now since I left you. The years pass as if they were hours and the hours as if they were years. My dear brother, it is time for you to make a decision. Above all, I would not want you to become a priest for any other reason but faith. I would rather you became a rag picker. Tell all our relatives not to seek riches or comfort. The humility of the poor is the key to heaven. Don't worry about my health, but do pray that my faith remain unfailing. There is nothing actually wrong with my lungs. My illness is one which you can live with a long time, just as you can die of it in your sleep. So I put myself in the hands of the Lord. Month. It's been a month, Mother, since this obscurity began. Why is it? Why is it? Maybe you are paying for the privilege of Lord. When one fixes one's eyes upon too bright a light, 
The brightness blinds one for a while. But blind people smile and have courage. Do as they do, little sister. I'll try. And don't worry. Patience is a virtue which has its rewards. You must wait. Even the most holy of saints walked in darkness for a time. The holiest. They had more force. I've got no reserves. I am nothing but a failure. <laughs> no, you're nothing but a baby. And the purity of your faith must be like a baby. It's time for mass. The humiliation of being carried. No, the grace of being carried. What a little lazy bones you are to stay in bed. This isn't a bed at all. No, I'm here in my chapel. I'm performing a service. And what service are you performing? I'm being ill. That's most useful to the community. I assure you it is, Mother. You know, springs alone are not enough to water the meadow. You've got to have some rain. That's what I am. I see in your eyes that you have bad news for me, Mother. Tell me quickly. My poor little friend. Father Perelman. Oh, my God. The community is assembled in the chapel. In prayer that his soul may rest in peace. That his soul may rest in peace. But our souls do not want only peace. They want light. Yes, light to see by in the darkness. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our Lord. My poor child. Please, Mother, will you send me Julie? I mean, Sister Vincent Garros. She, too, is one of his parishioners. Send her, please. Bernadette, Father Perrimont. I know. Help me to put on my clothes, Julie. But you're ill. You can't walk. I want to go pray for him. Quick. In the chapel? No. Outside, in the wind, by the lake. It's there I'll find him. But Bernadette, I want to. of our death, in the hour of our death. Mother Natalie, did you hear me? Yes. Your voice came to me in chapel. What's the matter? I'm afraid. Afraid? Afraid. I received all the graces, and I didn't make use of them. My dear sister. I didn't have the right to this privilege. Why was it me, who is nothing? Nothing. That is the very reason. <gasps> sister Gabrielle. I'm all right. Please don't pay attention. If only you'd change my nurse. But why? Because you're not sleeping. It's my duty. No. It's mine. Let's try oh. to change her position, sister. Oh, no, no. 
Don't move me now. Don't move me now. You'll feel more comfortable. Was he comfortable on the cross? Now, now, don't you say another word. Why was the miracle wasted on me? Lay ye up not your treasures. sense that you were gone. I'm sorry, Mother. Please pray for me. Mother, pray for me. Uh, I'm thirsty. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for me in the hour of my death, in the hour of my now a saint, and the humble cardinal who years later blessed her shrine, himself of peasant stock, has become His Holiness John XXIII, Vicar of Christ and spiritual leader of over 500 million people. He has said of Bernadette, how luminous the example of that sanctity which opened to such a little and humble child the ways of the heavens. In the words of St. Paul, and the weak things of the world has God chosen to put to shame the strong. <laughs> 